Hello guys, welcome back to this episode where we discuss virtual networks. Before we build a virtual network, I would like us to get into a quick scenario on this blackboard. Everyone lives in the house. Well, somebody might argue that later, but 99% of us, we have our own homes. Whether it's in the cave, or in the brick building or anywhere else it is our home so let's call it H for home now you and I are not beings who are bound to a certain place without mobility you and I need to be at a destination coming from somewhere we should be able to move this way that way that way and that way. Well, the truth is, most times you and I are moving to the right and to the left and to all other directions. Really, we don't do a lot of this unless you want to fly on an airplane. Okay? Somewhere. Okay, then we go up a lot. And maybe sometimes if you live in, in the West, you will use the underground trains to get to your locations. Now, you live in your home and you need to go to buy some grocery from a grocery shop. And the grocery shop has groceries, which you need to bring home. What you do is commit to moving from where you are, which I, I may call a source, to a destination. And from the same destination, which becomes a source, to where you are, a destination. So you make your way and make your way back. Now, to commute between your home and the shop, you need road to travel between those two destinations there are two destinations because they go that way and they also are source because they go that way now the road to travel from your home to the shop is what we normally call a network now imagine this house is not a building where you live imagine that building called a shop is not a shop where we sell things and imagine them to be two different machines and we call them for example a server then there's a database same scenario same analogy this is a server and this happens to be a database Okay, so this now becomes a DB, that becomes a server. I will call it SRV. Okay, a server would need to be talking to a database. And to allow that to happen, you need to make sure that the server database, they share a common network. What do I mean by this? If I need to talk to a database faster, for example, I need to be on the same road. With a database of course if i'm talking to database outside the same road i'll have to use other avenues like going to public cloud securely to talk to the database that is elsewhere let's say this tiny database over there is a blue database okay so virtual networking is a mechanism by which machines securely talk to each other in the cloud now microsoft calls dear one virtual networks and they call it v net aws called as vpcs i'm not too sure what google calls this but it's likely to be also a virtual network okay so that they may call it a virtual network Okay, 
for sure AWS and Azure. These are the names they give them, VNet. And what it really is, is a big box called the VNet. And it has little boxes in there called subnets where they put in things like servers, web applications, databases, function apps, and even others, IoT stuff, and get them to talk to each other freely. Okay. Now there are security parameters you can put in to make sure that this web app can only talk to, for example, database, or can only talk to the server, and the server can talk to database and talk to web app, you can control them. And what we normally use for that is something we call the Network Security Gateway, NSG. Normally, it's represented as a Network Security Group, guys, sorry, a Network Security Group group. All right, so that's normally represented by a shield, okay? All right, so without much ado, now let's delve into actually building our own virtual network. And to do that, we head back onto our Azure portal and we click on virtual networks. Virtual networks need to be in a location. Okay, so I'll say create a virtual network. And it's asking for the resource group. I don't want it to be my cloud shell was group because that's for my cloud shell, that's for my portal console. I want to create a new one and I'll call it Expert Cloud Architect RG to resource group, for example. Now, naming is entirely up to you and your creativity, but it must mean something because we are Expert Cloud Masters and our focus is uh, showing how things are done in the cloud space. I'm going to call this one Expert Cloud Architects, for example. RG, the resource group, it will create it when it creates a virtual network. Then I call it virtual network name. So this happens to be our first virtual network. So let's call it our first virtual network. Okay. And the location of it is in UK South. Now, I don't particularly need that. So I just call it first virtual network because we create other ones. Okay, and then it location asks you, I'm in the UK South, so it's easy for me to use UK South because it's faster for me. The data center is very close to where I am, so I can get to it faster. There's no point in me trying to put this in Japan or Germany. Germany might even be fast, but I can't put this in Korea, for example. I could, but what benefit is that to me when it comes to latency? So I'll do Nest, and it's asking you about things like Bastion, Firewall and DDoS. We'll get to that one of these days, but I don't need all of that. Next, here comes a bit important bit. It says the whole space is called the 10 space. So you got this IP address block 1000 slash 16. It will give you 5,536 addresses. And the default subnet is, is named default, which I'm going to change around and I'll call it, for example, let's say there's a, a subnet just for front end. I call it the front end subnet. Now, it said my address is 10 zero. Okay, a slash, slash 24. I'm going to use the one network and slash 24. So all the servers are going to be 10 zero dot one. Okay, all right. I don't need to create anything else. I'll leave it as they are. I'll not even create an NSG for now. I can add another subnet. Let's call that one backend. Um, default name is default, so it's going to be backend subnet. And this is the 10. Let's try and use 10.3 because I'll do the middle tier subnet. It's the 24 as well. Now do add. Okay. So I'm just creating front end backend for the meantime. And then we go into tax. Tax are extremely important. It it identifies the resource and where they are. 
and it's good to apply them but on this occasion i'll click on next review what i've done so far the naming resource group the subscription the side is the subnet you can see them front end and sub and back and subnets and then finally i click on create this might take a few moments but then you'll have a functioning network virtual network where you can now deploy your servers databases web applications and what have you so the first thing you see is it's creating the virtual network and then it's going to go ahead and create a subnet all right this might take a few moments oh well it's all done we got the deployment details we create a virtual network and in the virtual network when i go to resource i will see on the left hand side here subnets okay you have the front end and the back end subnets okay in the future we'll be able to deploy a virtual machine to any of these subnets and configure rules okay so one more time virtual networks they give you and i the opportunity to securely transmit data between vms servers and what have you okay so we have a virtual network now called the vnet and then we have subnets hosting our resources so subnet one maybe it's hosting the server subnet two is allowed to switch to subnet one so sub two maybe that's hosting a db okay so transparently they look, it looks like one layer but really they all have their own segments but by default every subnet in the vnet can talk to each other freely okay all right so that's it for virtual networking we will get back into more of um network security groups um peering virtual network gateways everything else like that but in the meantime i want to thank you for your time and i'll see you on the next one until then it's bye for now see ya